everyone. Well, Welcome back to Queen. Wait, wait what no, are you doing? Yeah. Welcome, Welcome to Pick, Pick Your potion. potion. Yes, guys. Pick Your Potion. That's what we're calling it now. Yeah. And there's a couple reasons for that. Um, we were Queen of Cups, and that was a really wonderful project. We've been doing this a year now, which I think is cool. Has it been a whole year? It has, because our first one was with the equinox oh with the spring God, equinox it has. but um right now queen city it's not done forever but they are taking a little breaky poo mm -hmm. but we didn't want to leave y'all hanging so we decided now we also have um people that are helping us with this so it's not just us and a camera kind of going for it yes we've learned a lot of lessons we've had trials and errors we drank too much prosecco last time i was here and i swore <laughs> way too much i apologize for that Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we have crazy cats who are jumping on things. Yep. Yeah. So. so, yeah, we're back at my house for this one. Um, and we're going to jump into it. Um, yeah. Like, in the spirit of things like new names and, you know, new videographers and things like that, like, yeah. this is our spring equinox episode. And, like, for me, the spring equinox always represents that point in the year where the things that you may be created resolutions for at the beginning of the year, or like we talked about last time when shit hits the fan and you have to change something at the beginning of the year. Yeah. This is the point where you should be kind of like settling into your changes and your intentions and actually starting to see some level of fruition from it. So like it's not harvest season, so it's not fully yeah. developed, but like, it's getting there. Like we're, you know, we're experimenting with new things and, and you know, launching new things. And yeah, I think that's just a really exciting time of year. Definitely. And I'll take a little break for that in the spirit of newness. I also have a new familiar because we always have to do the familiar update. <laughs> this is Mimsy Solstice. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So she's going to be causing, uh, wreaking havoc throughout the entire episode. Um, so just, just get used ready. to hear, hearing the jingling now, um, me yelling at her. <laughs> but yes, she's new, she's fun, she's full of mischief, um, she brings good energy. So, and you had a cat thing, didn't you? I do have a cat thing. It's not like as intense as all of the other cat things <laughs> we've talked about so much cat things. several episodes, but yeah. um, I actually did a reading for myself, a tarot reading, a couple days ago. And I got the Queen of Wands as my, um, like myself in the situation. Or actually, Ooh. actually, it was in the environment, the environmental factors position. Nice. And at first, I was like, "Yeah, I kind of feel like this woman, but why is this showing up in the environmental factors?" And then I looked, and I was like, "What's around her?" Oh. Okay, cats. cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one actually looks exactly like my familiar, Neko. Yeah. Um, and so, like, in the context of the reading, it was actually a business reading, and it was kind of this question of, like, where am I at with my rebrand? Because I'm rebranding my brand as well. So Oh, this is all very everything. timely, yeah. Yeah. Um, and interestingly enough, I keep getting this idea that... Me being a crazy cat lady um, and getting lavish gifts. The cat's walking across the cameraman right now. That's why I'm laughing. Um, like getting lavish gifts for my cats that are ridiculous and absurd is going to be like a part of my brand story now. Yeah. And my one cat who looks like the cat in this card is like, she's old and she's bitter and she's constantly yelling at me and telling me to like, upgrade things and up level things and give me more things and be nice and blah 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 and I'm like instead of being annoyed by this cat I'm gonna just listen to her because she's my familiar and just because she's old and senile doesn't mean she's <laughs> not still my familiar yes so that's kind of that's my my cat update like that's I'm going to update. just listen to my cat now and see if it makes me have more business success yeah <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, for a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, for a crazy person. We are both crazy people. So, I mean, we touched a little bit on Equinox stuff, um, but for you Zers out there that didn't see our, our first episode, Equinox is a fear touched on. It's sort of the halfway point between, the, it is the halfway point, it's not sort of, it's the halfway point between the solstices. So it's when day and night are equal. Um, and she and I had different perspectives about it because I sort of see it 
um, it's sort of, it's summer Libra, it's with, which you have Gemini. So you get the two halves of something. And with Libra, it's much more balanced. You're right. Um, I brought up balance and um, a few had brought up more of wholeness and um, newness. So I guess that's sort of my perspective. Um, Gemini season, seeing the duality, but um, also making sure that those things are in harmony. Mm, and Gemini yeah. gets so much hate. I feel bad for Geminis. <laughs> I'm a Gemini rising, so I feel like I can speak to the Gemini thing a little bit. I'm glad you brought that up, yeah. actually. Um, yeah, Gemini tends to get this um, thing of, like, it's two-faced or, like... Everyone's like, Geminis are psychopaths. And I'm like, okay, Virgo, like, <laughs> keep nitpicking. I'm, I'm kidding, Virgos. I love you. You're wonderful people. <laughs> You're really loud about being Virgos. <laughs> And hating Gemini's. <laughs> Maybe that's just my stereotype. Is that? <laughs> no, that, but like on my Facebook feed, but like everybody that is into astrology, they're like, ah, Gemini, psychopaths. And then. Interesting. They, it, those same people tend to be very, very loud about their sign come Virgo season. Oh. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not picking on you. It's okay. But it's just one, it's just a thing I've noticed. Interesting. See, yeah. I normally see people hating on Scorpios a lot. Oh, yeah. They're like, Scorpios, um, please don't murder us. Yeah. yeah. And I think Capricorns and Tauruses get a lot of critique as well. Yeah. But that's because they're Earth signs, so... I'm <laughs> just kidding. That's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, the... Honestly, and like, it's funny because like, I'm a Gemini rising, but I will openly say that some Geminis are Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Douchebag, like my yeah. ex. <laughs> it just, it just happens. Um, but and speaking to the balance thing versus the being out of balance thing, like there's good sides and bad sides to every zodiac sign, to like every element, to like yeah. everything. So it's really about figuring out what your, um, and I think we touched upon this in the last episode, like yeah. what your perceived weaknesses are and transforming them into strengths instead of like you were saying in the last episode, yeah. just like using it as a crutch. So for Gemini, I feel like instead of like leaning into the like, I'm a psycho, I have split personalities, you should just expect me to be crazy. Like it's good to maybe instead realize that it's good to have two different aspects of your personality because they can balance each other out in a healthy way. Yeah. And we can all take that advice during this uh, Gemini season. And like Asher yeah. was saying, not only is it Gemini season, but it's also the equinox, which is equal day, equal night. So that theme of balance is just universal right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, even going into this equinox, because Gemini is sort of later in the season for that. Mm -hmm. But going into it, you're, we're coming out of this Pisces energy, which is very feelings oriented, very uh, introspective. And then it gets hit with Aries, which is like, let's go and get some shit done. Like take no prisoners. And then... It, Taurus kind of backs it off, and then we have Gemini. So, like, that's sort of the more of the Zodiac lessons. And we talked a little bit about Zodiac stuff in our last one, about how to sort of work with that energy and not even using it just for yourself, being like, well, I'm this side, and this is how what it means for me. It's like, well, let's look at how it's used in your environment and being like, okay, it's the same way is using the moon signs and the seasons and what is the lesson from the sign? What do I need to do right now in order to just work with the energy that's around me? Mm -hmm. So I think that it's interesting, zodiac stuff aside, if you're not into that, um, I think it's really interesting that this equinox is coming with a full moon, like basically oh, the day yeah. after. So full moon energy, that's like what has... Like, that's the time to think of what you want to get rid of. And I think how I'm even picturing that is what do I want to leave behind in the winter? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's the last full moon of, like, the cold season for us. So, yeah. like, leave whatever you're leaving Well, let's behind. hope so. It is Western New Year, so we <laughs> we'll did Yeah. We had winter till May last year, so... <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> this one's been less brutal, though, in my opinion, but it's like... Uh, out the oh, okay. right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. Like, I tried to channel the spring equinox by wearing a sundress today, but it's literally a blizzard out. And I wore a hoodie, so there it is. There's that Jedi. Balance. <laughs> There's the balance. <laughs> Yay. Here's to that. We're very balanced today. Yes. I keep, like, wanting it to be 
farther along than it is, hence the already wanting to talk about Gemini, even though we're like barely into the spring. And we're we're but, still in Pisces right now. At the same time, we are in Pisces. <laughs> we're like, Gemini season's here. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, let's spring it up. But yeah, like in that kind of, I think for me, the spring equinox season, it is about that balance, but it's also about like a coming out party. Mm -hmm. So like... It's, you've been brewing about something, you've been stewing about something, you've released things in the early part of the winter, and you're yeah. starting to figure out who you are this year. And, I mean, if by the time it's the spring equinox, you don't have something, at least a little thing, to celebrate about your new development, it probably is like a wake-up call that you need to, like, come out more with whatever your new thing is, because we're already, like, a quarter into the year at this point, right? Yeah. So... It's kind of really just a good time to, just as the plants are starting to emerge and just as the animals are starting to hatch or, you know, go into heat and run out and do crazy shit, yeah. whatever. <laughs> like, we it's are... It's not May Day quite, yeah, but, quite. <laughs> but... We're getting ready for May Day. Yeah, and like... That is wild. <laughs> it's kind of just that time to um, be like, woo, I'm coming out, I'm... This is me. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. And the little just, seedling, like shaking off the seed parts so it can yeah. root roots and stuff. Yeah. That's where we're at. And in our case, shaking some snow off. As yes, well. definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, in that sort of spirit, um, I did a tarot reading for myself the other day because I've been continuing on that. And it's been really helpful. I'm going to show this deck to you guys today, even though I've been using a different deck because it's been really focused on my career and that kind of thing and I'm like I would like to talk about other things like yes I get it um, <laughs> so that's um yeah that one this is my financial deck right now and it's not nice um <laughs> but one day it will be uh, exactly <laughs> but my two favorite cards that I've been um that came out in a reading with a different deck I'm using these ones because they're aesthetic um are death and page of wands so Page of Wands, what my interpretation of it was um, a lot of newness and creating a new venture, jump, leaning into opportunities as they arise. Um, and not being a complete fool about it, not being like, oh, like, I'm just going to... Can I see this? Because I'm yeah. not familiar with this deck. I oh, just yeah. want to follow along with oh, what, yeah. Yeah. what you're interpreting here. And I, well, I used that my dragon deck for that one, but mm. um, just from my readings about this one, uh, Page of Wands is about taking life, seizing it, but I'm also coupling it with death, um, where it's you're letting things go. To experience these new things, you have to get rid of the old things. You have to cut away the dead seeds and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so the ruin that I've been using a lot these days, I burned it on a bay leaf on our last wine and witchcraft, is Degas, and it is day, steady, progress, um, and... My, my, these are the ones my dad made me, so when I was little, it says, Degas is mirth and hope to rich and poor and is useful for all. So, it's about, don't, you don't need to do that. Hi, dude. Uh, it's about keeping, keeping the faith and that it's going to get better, that your life is changing and you can manifest more. Uh, yeah. So, that's, that's the spirit I'm doing. So, people get all freaked out about the death card. But You're like, bring really, it on, bitch. I'm like, please, <laughs> oh my god, death card me. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way with the death card. It's yeah. like, sometimes it's just needed. and It's very needed, yeah. Especially, like, we like to talk about it around November season, because that's the season of death. But interestingly enough, like, in order for rebirth to happen, like, that death thing has to happen in order to create space for it. Yeah, so. these plants can't grow without dead stuff to feed on. Exactly. So, Compost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm composting lots of shit right now. I don't know about you, but... Totally. So, like, my favorite cards for this time of year are... They're going to be like... You have, like, these zombie ones and, like, death. I know. And mine are just, like, the cutest cards in the Rider Waite Smith deck, <laughs> which does have some ugly cards in it. Like, I'm not a fluffy bunny tarot reader, but... I mean, it's spring equinox, so... Like... <laughs> I really resonate with the Six of Cups for this time of year because for me it just, it literally like the flowers that they have are like obviously like spring flowers, like daffodils yeah. and stuff like that, which... Crocuses, which... Crocuses. <laughs> like, 
which they they don't last long, you they know? Don't. Like they emerge right out of the snow, like they don't give a damn. Yeah. But as soon as it gets a little bit too hot, they're done. You know? Yeah. And like what's really interesting about those showing up in this card for me and showing small children, it just represents the fact that um there are fleeting times in your life when things are fresh and new and they're not going to be that way for long, like childhood or early spring yeah. flowers. And for me, this card always comes up when like I want to rush forward and have something be fully developed. And then this card will come up and be like, you need to enjoy the process of getting there because one day you'll look back on this and feel like this time was too short or feel like nostalgic about it yeah and you know spring equinox is kind of that time because we're always like yeah let's get into summer man but then you'll look back once it's like 100 degrees and you're like damn i miss those crocuses you yeah. know like, i miss the days when it was like 55 and that was a relief yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. not time to pop your shorts on yet like don't yeah. do that like but <laughs> i think with all of the all that we've been talking about the biggest question that comes to mind for me is how do you stay balanced while you're growing? Because um, what you've touched upon about wanting to grow faster, not cherishing the time where you're like, okay, like things are not fully in fruition, but there there's movement happening. Mm -hmm. So do you have any thoughts about that? Like how do you stay balanced while you grow? I do. I have a card for that, actually. Actually, I have a couple of cards for that. <laughs> so first things first, um, I like to talk about the Four of Wands because the Four of Wands is a moment of celebration of accomplishing something. Like you've got the foundations of something, you have the legs of the chair prepared. Now it's time oh. to start building the piece of furniture on top of it. But what's really interesting about Four Energy is that it is the beginnings of something that is stable, but there's like nothing built up yet. So you might want to tend towards rushing forward to be like, I want to build the rest of the piece of furniture. Like, let me hurry up and do this instead of actually celebrating the fact that you have come as far as you have. Okay. And so like for me, anytime I get a four of wands, I have to ask myself, Am I giving myself credit for how far I've come before I like have a bunch of anxiety about how far I need to go? And then on the flip side of that, if I am celebrating too hard, you know, <laughs> spring equinox is that coming out party and it's like, are you ready to fully come out with whatever you're doing? Like, are you getting too wild? Are you celebrating your success before it's actually stable enough for you to be, I don't know, spending too much money or partying too hard or whatever it is, you know, um, being overconfident essentially. Yeah. So it's that balance between this is just the four out of the tarot deck. There's 10. So you're not even halfway there. So don't over be, don't be overconfident to the point where it's detrimental, but also don't like skimp out on giving yourself credit. Like this is a picture of a party that's happening. Like yeah. celebrate your success. So like, that's kind of my Thing. And then I also like the temperance card because yeah. it's really just about like in order to manifest exactly what you want, you have to be in a good vibration during the building process because anxiety is going to only manifest more anxiety or put off your goal for longer. But you also have to be able to be diligent about what your goal is and make sure you're moving towards it. And that can be hard for people, you know, so it's kind of nice. just keeping that balance, you know. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I'm not as familiar as the tarot with you. There is a room called Thurisaz that I really like, and that is that's sort of like the four um, energy that you, you touched upon, where uh, Thurisaz is likened to walking up a hill. It's the midway point, um, and it, it's part of the journey. So you walk up the hill, and then before you complete the rest of it, you, you pause and you bless... Uh, the doorway like before you step into the next part of your journey. So that's a rune and a symbol that I really enjoy. I really enjoy labyrinths a lot as well. I have a really? giant... I had no idea. Yeah, I have a labyrinth. <laughs> a giant labyrinth tattooed on my back. Uh, I've been carrying this like cool little... I found this when I was in Louisville. This little Hopi uh, labyrinth in my pocket a lot. Um, 
but those can be really helpful. And there's one behind the a church in Buffalo, the UU church. And I'll walk that if I'm if I need it. Um, but I try and inc incorporate. I've been mean, being really diligent about incorporating balance just into my everyday practice um, in general. Is uh, Afira <laughs> won't poke fun of me. Everything I do is witchcraft, and it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's witchcraft. Cooking, witchcraft. Oh, do never start that. Witchcraft. witchcraft. It's all witchcraft. Uh, scolding your cat. Scolding your cat. Witchcraft. Definitely witchcraft. <laughs> um, but I just try and be really mindful with my own practices. So I've been making sure to stay in touch with myself. So I journal a lot. I've just started doing a lot more yoga, which has been really helpful. Um, just starting my day with intention, like waking up, making food, lighting a little incense, doing some yoga, um, like getting my, myself in the headspace ready for whatever the day brings me. And that's really helpful. But on the flip side, this is also a really tough time of year for me. I, I have lost a lot of people between January and the beginning of March, and I continue to lose people all within that time. So it's a big grief period for me. So some days, I instead of being like, oh, you're going to be healthy and you're going to eat food groups and go to the gym, it's like, no, you're going to like drink far too much and you're going to be emotional and you're going to cry, but then you're going to get over that in the next day. Mm -hmm. You get this day or day or two to be an emo person, but then you got to put your pants on and you got to just be like, oh, bills need to be paid on time. You don't get to do this forever. So that's part of my balance is... Yeah is it's it's not staying completely zen forever it's allowing those swings but letting yourself experience them to a healthy degree yeah i think that's a really important point that you bring up because and again something that we like to talk about with the temperance card like when i was first learning the tarot i read this great book called tarot for beginners which sounds really cheesy but it's actually a really good book um, and the way she described this card was temperance is about balance, but it's not the kind of balance that automatically means 50-50 of everything. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of balance where you just have to feel into what's needed and trust your intuition. So if you are training for a marathon, balance isn't going to be equal parts working out and equal parts sitting on the couch eating bonbons. Like if you're training for a marathon, you're going to mainly be training for a marathon and then maybe taking Epsom salt baths. You know, yeah. right. you know yeah. you're not you're not going to be like slacking off. But if you've been a workaholic like I have for the past few years, getting back into balance might mean an excess amount of just self care and relaxation. Yeah, and like I just to nerd out over like terrible rock music for a second. Like I love the band Six A.M. and they have this I don't song. Know this band at all? You know who Nikki Six is? No, from Motley Crue, the guy who died and came back to life. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> he like did a bunch of heroin in 1987. Was Ooh. clinically dead for a minute and then came back. No, you, you know never I, heard of this story. Did, you didn't hear oh, anyway. Okay. Go on, do self care. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just <laughs> going on a tangent here. But anyway, he wrote a diary in 1987 about his crazy life, and then um, he's in a band now. And they, their first album was them creating a soundtrack for that diary. And there's this song um, that, and of course I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's literally about those days where like you like relapse or those days where like it sucks, but you're in a growth practice. Uh, oh, it's called Accidents Can Happen. And the chorus goes, you know that accidents can happen. Um, it's, it's all right. You're not alone. Like this is, it's not your whole life. It's only one day. Mm -hmm. You haven't thrown everything away. And so the concept is like, you can have those shitty completely down in the dumps days and not feel like you have to stay in that energy the next day, you know, because yeah. we always, we are so hard on ourselves. We're like, Oh, well, if I got this far down in the dumps, I feel like I might as well go all the way to rock bottom because like, whatever but we have to realize that part of balance is letting yourself have that really bad day yeah. and knowing that you're not stuck there you yeah. can hit the reset button at any point you know i was thinking about this too because i was talking to my friend because i mean she um, she hates mondays as many people that don't have mondays off like i do 
But it, it was for a lot of reasons. It was because, like, her fiancé, he has, he has to leave to travel on those days for his job. And um, she's just, like, she's super busy. And I was thinking about it. I was like, well, on Mondays, I'm going to try and send her, like, something weird. That'll make her smile. But it got me thinking about, like, those sort of days. I also don't have that kind of pattern in my life. My life is just no day is the same as the day before. But when you have those days that you know are coming up, doing something kind for yourself, being like, well, maybe in her case, maybe it's like Cupcake Mondays. Like, I'm going to go and I'm going to do, like, go and get this thing. Mm -hmm. So I have one thing to look forward to. Yes, all these things suck. But then I still, like, this is the part that's kind. Mm -hmm. um, and that just using that to sort of reframe your brain. I mean, unless you really want to just sit there and be sad, then... Some people enjoy that. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, you can miss me with that, but uh, <laughs> I'd rather go and find something fun to do. Yeah, um, and I think that kind of fits into the concept of, like, seasonal depression as well, because, like, I mean, as we're filming this, as you guys know, we're trying to be on this new train of, like, actually being able to have the episode come out on the seasonal celebration, so we're filming in advance. Um, so, like I said, we're looking, I'm wearing a sundress, and we're looking at outside in a blizzard, but spring equinox, especially where we live in western New York, it's a time period where you are so freaking tired of winter, and you don't know for sure if spring equinox is going to be sunshine and, and uh, crocuses, or if it's going to be a blizzard for another month. Like, you just don't you know. Don't. Yeah. And you have to realize that you have to notice the little things. So, for example, regardless of the fact that it's a blizzard outside, we're approaching... 5 or 6 p.m. I don't know what time Oh, it is, I was so but, jazzed yesterday when it was 6 p.m. and it, this, it wasn't completely dark. I was like, Exactly. Oh, like, <laughs> so even though we don't have the physical warmth and the sunshine necessarily, we have to notice those little things to be thankful yeah. for. The fact that the sunset is later and we can enjoy watching the sunset through the window or whatever it is, you know? Yeah, definitely. spirit of newness and new beginnings um this is a new project it's a continuation of queen of cups but it, there is some distinct differences because we're very balanced yeah. so <laughs> so we're gonna basically we're trying to get more organized guys because literally to be really honest the first year of this project was kind of just an experiment yeah like yeah we i don't know if we ever ever mentioned this but asher and i were literally at a Queen City Magazine uh, holiday party last year. Oh, yeah. And we're drinking, and all of a sudden she mentioned in a conversation that didn't even have to do with me something about witchcraft, and I was like, oh, my God, you're a witch. We need to do something together. I remember um, that being at Milky's, but we could have been married, marrying two different... I, I think it continued. The conversation continued. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, you have a weird name in uh, in our into witchcraft too." Like, did we just become best friends? Want to get bunk beds? And then he was like, oh. <laughs> and then we continued again at the exactly. holiday party. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it was kind of just a thing of like, let's see what happens. Um, but like now that we've been doing it for a year, um, and we've kind of figured out what works, what doesn't work, and, you know. Yeah. And, like, I'm just on this crazy, speaking of, like, going into Aries energy, I'm an Aries moon, and when oh, Aries right. season starts to come around, I'm like, let's make everything really legit and yeah. officialize <laughs> these projects and go, go, go. So, come like... Come with your Aquarius, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. So, like, combine that with everything. It's just ridiculous. But, yeah, combine that with my rebrand that I'm going through with my brand. I'm ready to just up-level everything so again we've hired a videographer we're still like sorting out exactly how we're going to do everything with the lighting and all of that today if there's any weird lighting it's actually my fault because i was supposed to bring the lights and i didn't um but as you can see the film quality is much better and the editing is much better and we also want to make the content better because even though Asher and I do just like to drink wine and see what kind of ramblings of witchcraft come out, we want to really make this interesting for you guys. Yeah. So if at this point and you've caught the past eight episodes, I guess, um, and you're wondering anything about our lives, about our practices, or just about witchcraft in general, like if you are new to witchcraft or whatever, we just want to make this an interactive project. So. Yeah. We will link our both of our Instagrams below, and if you just want to 
send us a message and ask a question or create a suggestion or anything like that. Like we just, we want to hear from you guys, you know? Yeah, definitely. Agreed, agreed, hard, agree. And I, I, we're not going to lose our spirit of tangential <laughs> ramblings about whatever. Cheers to that. Yeah, no, because I love tangential ramblings. It's like how I live my life, but um, we're, we're being more balanced now, so we're planning things. So, yes, here it is. We're planning the ramblings <laughs> a little bit better. We're plan the planned <laughs> ramblings. Yes. We're also going to be just for shaking stuff up. We're going to try and keep it consistent with alternating between Astro's house and my house. Um, so you'll get your your dose of sparkly lavender colored things, and you'll also get your dose of eclectic zombie tarot, zombie tarot. <laughs> tarot <laughs> stuff, and cat's name Doomhammer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So thanks for watching, guys, yeah. and again, welcome to Pick Your Potion Pick podcast. Your Potion. We picked red wine today, by the way. Oh, yes. Oh, do you want to tell them what we're drinking? Um, Yes, this uh, Zestos Garnacha. It's pretty cool. It's uh, bright and silky, so and it says it pairs well with pepperoni pizza, but I have not <laughs> tested that, so I'll have to get more bottles. But. I mean, I don't eat pepperonis, but like, okay, so there's this thing people are always saying. <laughs> In fact, there's a joke. One of the comedians who like does comedy stuff with my ex has a joke that says, how come vegetarian girls are always drinking red wine when like red wine is supposed to be for steak? And it's so true though. Like I've never had a steak a day in my life, but how many glasses of red wine have I had? Couldn't tell you. Tons. <laughs> tons and tons. Yep. But aside from pepperoni pizza, it also goes well with red lipstick, which we're both wearing. So Yep. Yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers and to red lipstick to see change. See you guys next time. And happy Equinox, everyone. <laughs>